Hey everybody, Ron Russell here, and do I have an entertainment tonight interview with a great Scott Page. Scott Page was a saxophone player for Pink Floyd. Actually, if it wasn't for Scott, Pink Floyd would have probably been green something. <laughs> but he has made Pink Floyd Pink Floyd. <laughs> well. So now, with no further ado, here he is, the incredible Scott Page. Oh my gosh, what an intro. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. Thank you very much for the nice... But no, actually, I... Who's not the reason Pink Floyd's called Pink Floyd, but who just that's that record my play? opinion. That's, oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I want to ask you a question. Okay. What's the difference in music from your time to now? Ooh, you know that's a really good question. I don't know if so much the difference, but I think what's really changed is the fact machines have gotten involved now. And for me, what's interesting is I'm just sort of seeing soul being taken out of a lot of music. Now, it's not to say it's not all. Oh, I'm a technologist. I love technology. I love how it's used. But I think what's happening is people are starting to put too much crutch on using the technology, letting it drive as is that you know that sort of uh, thing that happens when you're in the studio and you have to cut something. So like you know when we when we used to do solos and put stuff on records it was going on to tape and you actually had to play the solo from top to bottom and yeah you could punch in but you know it wasn't like now you can just throw something in they can tune it twist it cut it fly it do it, everything and the other part that's changed is everybody's in the music business now tell you, me about it you got one of these you got garage band you got a studio right so there's so much music out there and the machines are sort of driving and kind of what's a little ner makes me a little worried about it is Great players, like great drummers and the feel that happens when you get like those classic records. Why does Led Zeppelin's, you know, why does it stand the test of time? You need Floyd, why does it stand the test? It was really, you get a sense of really feeling that moment that that person was in, putting it down on the tape, and that's what really touches the soul. When it's all the machines using the same samples, using the same stuff, it just be starts to become very flat. Now, there are some people that are doing it and killing it and using yeah. how to use it because they're coming from a place to make the machine not being the, the machine being the master, but you're the master telling the machine what to do. So, Okay, let me know. just tell them a little bit. We were here last night and we saw the entire show. Uh, I'm not a great fan of rock music. I think it's a little noisy. I'm more Johnny Mantis, Peggy Lee. We've got him some head, you know, Yeah, so I right. came here, you know, saying, all right, I'll do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I do like Pink Floyd. I remember when I was younger, I used to dance to Pink Floyd. But to hear the band live and to see what was doing on the dome was so incredible that I just laid, because I was laying in a lounge like a king, comfortable, and I thought, wow, this is such a beautiful concept. What a way to introduce us back to Pink Floyd music and this gorgeous ceiling display of color and light and fantasticness. And I think you did a brilliant job with it. I recommend everyone come and see this show no matter where it is. I don't bullshit or lie to you and I blow smoke up no one's ass and you know that. So if Ron Russell says go do it, see it, it's good. It is, in my opinion. Now tell me what you think about it. Um, you know, I'm actually very excited about this new f these new formats because, you know, today you can't really sell music anymore. The really what's, because there's so much of it, right? I mean, I got people giving me albums and I'm like, stop the music. I don't need any more music. I need something's really good. Well, now it's really about the experience and coming to this is an incredible way where you're combining this almost virtual reality kind of an experience, sort of a shared with a bunch of people in the same room with the actual music and with our thing, with our think experience, which we're doing the think Floyd experience, it's really about trying to capture what the, the, the soul of the artist all playing together. We're not using click tracks, we're not using all, we're just blowing and nothing's Beautiful. stuff. And so we're playing in that sense and so it's really kind of the exploration of the music of Pink Floyd at the same time with killer visuals and stuff that go along. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about kind of being in the, getting into the, this area of the uh, technology because I've loved technology. Of live. Yeah. For those of you out there who watch Broadway shows in film, which I always make a Broadway musical into film, you lose it. You've got to be on in Broadway in one of the theaters and hear it and see it live. It's exciting, it's thrilling because there's adventure. Somebody could make an error, so you always wait to see if there's a little error. <laughs> Filming is so clean and perfect, it's so boring. And I listened to rehearsals th this evening 
and they played Machine. Is that the title? Welcome to the Machine. Welcome. We learned a new one today. I loved it. It's like now my favorite, and I'm sorry it wasn't on last night, but I was fo tapping my foot, and I got up, and I was dancing with Eileen Shapiro because it really is exciting. Besides, now, on a personal note, Scott Page is probably, you know, I've interviewed thousands of people, and... I think now when I'm asked who's my favorite interview, I'm going to include Scott Page because, oh no, Scott, you're really a sweetheart. He is the nicest fella. He's like, I feel like I know him all my life. He's like my buddy. And I, and I really enjoy his work and he plays a mean sax. Now I'm trying to talk him into doing a sexy, slow, dreamy kind of sexy music. And I think he's going to do a, a, a sax album. I'm going to uh, talk him into it. It's like my favorite kind of way to play. Do an that. album of just saxophone music, but dreamy sax. Okay, that's a good idea. I'll bring, I'll bring back the dreamy sax time. Oh, right. I'm telling you, when the sa when the sax gets sexy and and lovey, there's no instrument like it. It just goes, it, it just hums you right into the bed. You know, the real guys, it's it's actually comes from here, right? It's like singing, it the is. same thing. So you've got to take that instrument, and you kind of combine and try to connect it with the source and go for it, right? That's the fun yeah, part. Yeah, but so many people don't really know how to play a sax. They play noise. They blast it. You have soul in your sax. Thank you very much. I hear the breathing. I hear the I hear the, the whole thing happening. Whereas most people just go, We'll That's see. how they do it. But you know why? Because the machinery, like you said, will correct all the bullshit that they do that's wrong. These guys play clean. And when I say clean, it's an experience. And you know, they're still with us. And I hope they're going to be with us 40 more years. So those of you out there that are young, and if you want to hear what real music is like, I suggest that you follow his... Well, how do we get here? Where the hell am I anyway? Where are you? We're at, I, have, I have no idea where I am. We're actually in a very interesting place. It's called Wisdom LA, and it's a, it's a immersive art park, and it's multiple domes. It did these domes. They have exhibits going on. You've gone in the domes, right, over here, and yeah. looked at the exhibit, all the art yeah. stuff, and then we have the live show that we do on in this other dome over here. So it's that Wisdom LA. Uh, it's down in the art district. Great place to come down and heck check it out. We come, we play here approximately every three weeks. We do the Think Floyd show. We got a killer band. You know, we got Steve Perkins from Jane's Addiction, Norwood Fisher from Fishbone, Kenny Olson from Kid Rock's band, and Roberta Friedman who was out with me also on Floyd, uh, and then a bunch of other great musicians. And we're going to actually start bringing in guest celebrities to kind of start doing the Floyd show. So it's going about to get a lot of fun. It's so it's going to be uh, unbelievable. Now I'm going to ask him a question. How much? How much are the tickets? Mm -hmm. Tickets go from uh, $59 up to $250 because we also have there's some interesting things. There's these actual beds that you can lay on that connect to the music and there's a whole experience. So we're, what we're trying to do is really create these unique experiences. Yeah, but what I could tell you, it's like flying in an airplane. Why pay first class $1,000 when the back of the plane gets at the same time as the front for $250? So even if you buy a $60 ticket, oh, no, great. you're going to get the same pleasure, enjoyment, and visual visual as the people who pay 250. 250 is VIP. It includes you to food and all the little goodies. The other one is it's really nice. So if you have a tight budget, oh, yeah. spend the money here. Don't buy Coke or pot <laughs> or, or pills. Go, no, gummy bears are good because they're cheap. But <laughs> don't, don't blow your money on drugs. And that's the other thing. You don't have to be loaded when you come here. Because when you see the show after five minutes, you feel like you're stoned out of your bird. So it's really great. Well, thank you very much for the... What a great freaking endorsement of our show. Listen, if I thought it was a piece of shit, I would just say, Oh, Scott, Dude, that was very interesting. Goodbye. That's what I love about you, man. That's why I think we connected, because your honesty is so... Yeah, I, mean, I, just, I stand by it. no BS. I, the people know that. Ron Russell tells the truth. I don't give yep. a fuck if you like it or not. I, I tell it to your face. I'm from New York, Brooklyn, tough guy. But no, seriously... I came here saying to Jimmy, where are my earplugs? Because I forgot them in the car. Because I always put earplugs. That's smart. Because... It's rock and roll. It is loud. You know, it's loud. And I didn't need earplugs. Because the music was so good. I can't tell you another time. Please do yourself a favor. Come to see this show. You will thank me. You'll go on Facebook and say, Ron Russell, you said it like it really is. And this guy is a super duper fella. And I hope he, you can meet him. If you do come, he'll say hi to you because that's the Absolutely. kind of fella he is. Thank you very much. Anyway, Scott, thank my baby, thank you. Oh, give me show. a hug, you come little on, man. fucker.